Hello everyone and welcome to WordPress SplashPage.com. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at the ProBlog Shop Splash Page Editor and how that works. So to start with we're going to go to Pages, Add New and we'll give it Title and we'll also select the ProBlog Shop Splash Page Template from the drop down menu here and now we're ready to go. Um, I know many of you are really excited about the the templating feature so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way and I can show you how that works and then I'll show you the rest of the features of the editor here. The the template feature is right here. If you'll click that it brings up the menu and we have um, a lot of different options that you can insert into the into the uh, editor here. The first couple are actually entire page layouts so they include the video and they include the button scripts um, for the sales pages and then we have several capture pages um, as well to choose from and uh, those are entirely ready to go uh, pretty much you just substitute out whatever content you want paste in your video scripts down in the in the uh, general settings here you can see it behind the behind the content and you're ready to rock and roll um, we also have uh, different layout sections so now this is just a section of code. This actually could be an entire splash page layout if you wanted to. You could probably put your video right here where this computer is. Um, but there's other layouts as well. Here's just kind of a two column. Um, you know, maybe you have a video or a picture over here and then a features and benefits table there. Uh, here's a three column layout if you wanted to do that. Um, and then we get into the features and benefits tables. We have four of them. Uh, we have just a standard checkbox one and we've got more of an icon one where these these would be pictures of different things and um, you know a little blurb here and there maybe you have a link that goes to a page um, if you have a couple different products as well uh, maybe you have three different products a you know a silver a gold a platinum these are really good you know for listing the the descriptions of, of what you get with each product and then we get into a couple testimonial boxes and then lastly we have a footer and disclaimer that you can insert in there and if this box is checked of course it's going to replace all the content but it's not checked by default um, but that is an option just to point that out let's go ahead and um, insert insert this option here just to give us some content to work with and the first thing I want to kind of point out is that the width of this isn't going to be the width of the page so everything's going to be kind of crammed together and you're not going to have a real good representation of what it looks like so to help us out with the workflow just so we can get a better idea of what we're working with what you can do is down in the bottom left you see a collapse menu you can click that and it gives us more room and then also on your screen options you can drop down to one column and that gives us a lot of room to work with and now you can see how it's spread out a little bit more and it's just much easier to work with. Um, so that's a little workflow tip. And a lot of these code snippets that you're going to be inserting use table features a lot. And we use tables to um, for layout for the most part. Um, and if you can see, let me see, how about this? You can see down in the bottom left you have these little words right here that you can that you can actually click on and when you click on them it's gonna highlight whatever whatever that table is or wherever this content is we have two tables in this case um, which is called a nested table actually let me just back up most of the inserts that you deal with are gonna have what I call a table wrapper it's basically um, a one cell one one column one row cell and it spans the entire width of the page um, and that's just kind to it's just there to kind of put everything in the middle and and contain everything and that's what this first table means you can see that it's entirely you know lit up right now um, but we also have this concept of nested tables a table inside of a table and you can nest as many tables as you want to but you but what happens is when you start nesting tables especially for layout it gets hard to maybe change the the properties of it for example I might be trying to you know click on this table but 
and edit the properties, but every time I try to edit the, the table properties, I can't pick the one that I want. You know, it's nested inside of there, so it's picking the wrong one. And I'm having trouble. So what we do is we target it by by clicking here first. We point to the table down here, and then we can right click and go to the table properties and edit it from there. Um, and we'll talk about tables a little bit more in another in another chapter. But I, what I what, what I want you to take away from this is that you can look down here and 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 point out where you want to go in in the content. Um, we also have a feature called show blocks and this is really helpful too because it puts you know little boxes around the content to section them off so you can see how everything is laid out and you see if you it's a little bit faint but there's a small p's up in these corner that stands for paragraph if there was a heading tag like here's an h2 tag and an h1 tag so it just gives you a better visual layout of what's going on with your content it's just another little workflow tip um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start moving along some of these features um, this right here is called remove format and this is an extremely helpful tool particularly when you're troubleshooting um, you'll come across instances where you know your texts aren't centering right um, maybe you're trying to put a color on it and it's not it's not updating it's just staying black uh, a lot of what happened is, well, a lot of people will copy and paste in from other programs, and uh, the editor does its best, but it can't always parse that information. So it does the best it can. But what it does is it puts a lot of extra coding in there. So if you're having problems getting some code to work right or display correctly, a lot of times what you can do is you highlight it, you remove the formatting, and it strips all that extra code away, and now you can go back in and um, it's not a very big font, is it? Now you can go back in and and redo your your formatting, and a lot of times that'll fix it. So keep in mind this remove formatting if you're having troubleshooting issues. And then here is an undo and redo button, um, pretty standard there. This is your spell checker; it's built in. Um, of course, you have bold, italic, and underline. This is a strike through and your block quotes. And here is the tables icon, which you will become very familiar with, I'm sure. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because we're going to have a whole video dedicated to tables. Uh, but to give you the basics on it, when you click the icon, it's going to ask you for how many rows, how many columns. It's going to ask you for how wide you want it, just some basic property information. Uh, but in addition to table properties, you also have cell properties. So if you click on individual cells, you can go and f dig further down and, t and start customizing like a background color, things like that. You can start customizing the look and feel of the table as well. Um, but again, we'll talk about tables a little bit later on. Uh, we also have, here's your numbering. If you wanted to do a, a list of one, two, maybe steps, step one, step two, step three. Um, maybe you just want a bullet point. Um, that's that feature there. The indent feature, I'm going to move down here with my content. The indent feature is important um, because when you're working on the internet, the tab button that usually indents um, paragraphs actually goes to the next field or the next input for the computer. So in order to get something to to tab in, you need to use these features over here. So you'll see how it tabs in and then tabs back. So that's how you indent using this editor. Of course, left align, center, and right align. These are your linking features. So, for example, if I wanted to link you know, this top, I would just highlight and click my link. And I can go to whatever website dot com and let's say maybe I wanted this to not link there anymore I can always unlink it and then um, if you've ever seen a link where you would click on it and it would jump to another part of the screen that's called an anchor link and what you can do is for example let's say I wanted to jump to the bottom bottom of this page right here I can select the flag here the anchor and give it a name 
and it's going to put a little anchor icon. So now what I can do is let's say let's say you wanted to click here and you would jump down there. So you can go to your link now and instead of URL type you can select the link to anchor and you can pick that custom name so now whenever you click on that this link here it will jump down jump down to this spot on the screen so that's a pretty cool feature as well here is just a horizontal line um, for example you just stick that in there and you can see it just sticks a line all the way across it's good for sectioning sectioning off different areas of your splash page these are special characters if, if you wanted a copyright um, a percent sign well, I guess it's on your keyboard here's some Greek letters um, all rights reserved a couple of different things on here a lot of this could be on your keyboard but we are really uses for the copyright I think the most and we have and then down here the, the last ones are just for for editing your font and styling your font we have a here's your headings headings one through six um, then we have the actual font so if you wanted to you know change to a Georgia style you you can do that and then the font size of course we go all the way up to 72 which if you're doing 72 you have a huge headline um, and then of course we'll have a the, the you you can color the text as well and we also have a a highlight feature if you wanted to highlight let's remove that real quick so we have a highlight feature as well um and that's pretty much the basic features if you wanted to use images uh you still use you still use this insert method and images are a little bit tricky to work with in this editor not really tricky you just need to know a couple things about how they correspond to each other and we have another video that will explicitly talk about images as well um, but as far as just getting the workflow down you know what you want to do is free up some space you know go to your screen options drop down to one column collapse your navigation menu give you give yourself plenty of room to work with and then just keep in mind that when you insert code that the majority of these are going to have some type of table wrapper around them you can see all the way around I have a table that goes around all the content and then I have I have here I have a table inside of a table inside of a table so you can see how you know maybe I'm not always going to be able to touch this or, or get to these these properties um, for the table so I can target I can target my different elements down here um, and then you know a lot of this is just going to take time to play around with uh, get get to know get a feel for it um, and then again of course the remove formatting that's going to be important if you need troubleshooting if you have any questions about uh, some of the features um, just post them in the forum uh, you can leave a comment we will be happy to help so I hope this has been helpful let us know if we can help you out in any way and we will catch you on the flip side